Uh, all right, the countdown to the midterms is on, and all eyes are on Pennsylvania as candidates for one of the state's U.S. Senate seats faced off in their first and only debate last night. Democratic Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman and Republican candidate Dr. Mehmet Oz discussed everything from the economy to health care. CBS News Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costa is in Harrisburg covering the race for us this morning. Robert, good morning. Good morning. Last night's debate was a crucial crossroads in the battle for the Senate. And it was also reflective of the state of politics in Pennsylvania and the nation. Tense exchanges on the issues and on character. And let's also talk about the elephant in the room. I had a stroke. He's never let me forget that. Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman started off the hour-long debate assuring voters he's still capable of doing the job of Senator five months after having a stroke. I might miss some words during this debate, mush two words together, but it knocked me down, but I'm going to keep coming back up. While his GOP opponent, Dr. Mehmet Oz, went straight to attacking his opponent as soft on crime. John Fetterman, during this crime wave, has been trying to get as many murderers convicted and sentenced to life in prison out of jail as possible. He has no experience. He has never made any attempt to try to address crime during his entire career, except showing up for photo ops here in Philadelphia. The two clashed on abortion. I don't want the federal government involved with that at all. I want women, doctors, local uh, political leaders, letting the democracy that's always allowed our nation to thrive to put the best ideas forward so states can decide for themselves. If you believe that the choice for abortion belongs between you and your doctor, that's what I fight for. Roe v. Wade, for me, is should be the law. He celebrated when Roe v. Wade went down. The abortion decision should be left up to states, and specifically when John you roll once. with Doug Mastriano. John, when I'm you done, are one, John, you'll have your turn, moment. John. And things got heated when they were asked about families struggling with the high cost of college tuition. Basically, what John Fetterman and Joe Biden are, 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 are arguing for is for plumbers who didn't go to college and couldn't, for a bunch of reasons, afford it, to pay the bills of lawyers who went to graduate school and haven't paid their debt back. Dr. Oz, you know, loves free free money when it's a, a half a million dollar tax break on one of his, you know, homes down in a ranch in Florida. And whether it was a $50 tax break, you know, about his farm in Montgomery County. So. Fetterman's use of a closed captioning device during the debate, where he read questions in real time on a screen above the moderators, sparked debate on social media with some observers seeing a strong performance amid recovery, while others cast him as unsteady. I, I, I do support fracking, and I don't, I don't, I support fracking, and I stand, and I do support fracking. Betterman would not say if he would release more of his medical records, but argued that he has been transparent. I believe if my doctor believes that I'm fit to serve, and, and that's what I believe is appropriate. Fetterman's advisors tell CBS News that in the coming days, they will make abortion rights a focal point in advertising. They also claim that in the hours after the debate, Fetterman raised more than $1 million. Meanwhile, Dr. Oz will hit the campaign trail later today with Nikki Haley, the former Trump administration diplomat. Anne Marie, Vlad. Robert, thank you. So for more analysis on last night's debates, we want to bring in Sean Sullivan. He's a CBS News political contributor and the deputy politics editor for campaigns at The Washington Post. Thanks for joining us. Um, your overall assessment of the candidates and their performances last night in the debate in Pennsylvania? Well, this race between John Fetterman uh, and Mehmet Oz has been one of the most contentious races uh, in the entire country this entire cycle. And not only have we seen uh, policy disagreements aired between these two candidates, but also a lot of personal uh, attacks and disagreements. And we saw that again last night. You just saw how personal this race has become, and, and it really was clear in that debate. We saw some of the issues, too, that you see the battle lines being drawn over in Pennsylvania, abortion, crime, um, and also some of the policy backgrounds of the two candidates. And this was also a chance for voters and for viewers uh, in Pennsylvania and around the country to see John Fetterman, who is recovering from uh, a stroke that he had in May. He has said on the campaign trail, and he said so again last night, he continues to sometimes stumble over his words. He relied on closed captioning because um, he said that uh, he and his doctor have said that he's having auditory processing 
issues. So this was a different kind of debate than, than we've typically seen. Um, and he did have some verbal stumbles. It was clear during the debate last night um, that, that that was happening. And so, you know, this was the first time and the only time it looks like that we're going to see these two candidates in the same setting on the same stage uh, during the course of this entire campaign. Yeah, and, and Sean, I, I believe I've seen some polling that suggests, at least for Democrats in Pennsylvania, uh, the physical uh, impairments that uh, the lieutenant governor has are, don't seem to be at top of mind for them. Uh, on, on the flip side, though, you have Dr. Oz, who's a medical doctor, uh, suggesting that uh, decisions around health care, women's health care, specifically abortion, should be left up to political leaders. Uh, how did that land? Well, that's something that the Fetterman campaign has really been seizing on both last night and this morning. And uh, I think it's something that we can expect to see them talking about a lot in the coming days. Democrats across the board, not just in Pennsylvania, have made abortion and protecting abortion rights a centerpiece of their campaign pitch to voters in these midterm elections. Um, and so I think what we can expect from the Fetterman campaign is you know, for them to draw a contrast in the coming days and say, look, John Fetterman is a, camp is a candidate who will protect uh, abortion rights. Uh, but on the other side, you have uh, a candidate in Oz who is going to do just the opposite. Now, Republicans uh, are making these midterm races about crime, about the economy, about the state of the country overall right now. And so we're seeing that uh, contrast in Pennsylvania. The question is, what will be top of mind for voters as they cast their ballots in these final weeks and on Election Day? Will it be abortion? Will it be crime? Will it be the economy? Will it be something else? I think we just don't know at this point. Uh, well, speaking of crime, let's take a ride up 95, shall we, to New York, because there was another debate, a gubernatorial debate between uh, Kathy Hochul and uh, Congressman uh, Lee Zeldin. They talked a bit about crime. I want to play some sound. I'm running to take back our streets and to support unapologetically our men and women in law enforcement. This is about all of us together, Republicans, Democrats, independents, as New Yorkers, to make sure our streets are safe again. I have worked hard to have real policies that are making a difference. And as you mentioned, that data is still being collected. But I did focus on bail reform in our budget. That's why the budget was nine days late, because I insisted on common sense changes. But there is no crime-fighting plan if it doesn't include guns, illegal guns. And you refuse to talk about how we can do so much more. You didn't even show up for votes in Washington when a bipartisan group of enlightened legislators voted for an assault weapon ban. So I wonder, um, is crime sort of a challenging issue, uh, perhaps for Democrats, not just because of local issues, but because of the national debate about how to tackle crime? how to tackle guns, how to tackle policing in this country. Yeah, I think even Democrats would acknowledge that it is a political challenge for the party. And you look at New York right now, a state that is a blue state, a state that has long tilted Democratic uh, on a statewide level. The polls are closer uh, in that gubernatorial race than I think some people had anticipated at this point in the election cycle. And one reason that strategists have presented for that is this debate over crime. As I've talked to Democrats over the last couple of years, they say, look, you know, we do have a compelling and effective platform to put forward on crime, but there is an image, they say, that they've sensed among voters that because of, uh, you know, some movements in the party, like defund the police, uh, that there is a, a sense some voters have that Democrats are not hard enough on crime. And that is what Republicans are trying to zero in on. You see it in these TV ads, you see it in the rhetoric, in the debates, they're trying to present this contrast and say, look, the other party can't be trusted to fight crime, to be strong against violent criminals. Um, and it's something that we have seen Democrats have to play some defense on. And I think we saw that in last night's debate in New York. Michigan also saw a gubernatorial debate last night between Gretchen Whitmer and her challenger, Tudor Dixon. What stood out to you there? Well, there was certainly a discussion uh, about guns in that debate, uh, which has also been an issue as we've talked about in other races. You know, it's interesting that race right now uh, in Michigan, a state that has been a pretty tight swing state over the last couple of years, at a moment when Democrats are uh, somewhat struggling in a lot of races around the country, we've seen Governor Whitmer, at least in recent polls, uh, have an advantage. And Democrats have pointed to Michigan as potentially uh, and I underscore the word potentially because we don't know what's going to happen uh, in the next two weeks. But as a potential bright spot 
for them if Whitmer is able to hold on. We've heard Democrats talk about trying to rebuild or reinforce this blue wall uh, in the upper Midwest that Trump, uh, former President Trump, was able to break through in 2016. And so the question is, will they be able to win statewide and in congressional races in Michigan? And then what happens in Pennsylvania? What happens in Ohio? What happens in Wisconsin? Um, but Whitmer is one of the candidates right now that Democrats point to as a model for having success politically in the upper Midwest. All right, Sean Sullivan, always great to have you. Thank you very much. Thanks, my pleasure.